have uh, His Holiness Vignabhinash Narsingha Swami here with us. I remember Maharaj mentioned to me before that he should be referred to as Bhakti Vignabhinash Narsingha. And that in itself is, is a title. Yes, yes. There is no Maharaj, there is no Swami that's needed after that um, as a name. Maharaj was one of the, um, uh, you know, can somebody do their mathematics now? Maharaj joined the Hare Krishna movement in 1971. So how many years are we running? 51. 51 years of Krishna consciousness. You can imagine what that is, you know, that, that requires consistency uh, to be there, to have taste in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, 51 days is difficult for things. 51 years is something else. Um, and Maharaj took sannyas in 1994, and he's been a sannyasi from that time. Um, an initiating guru, uh, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, somebody who's known for his beautiful lectures. I was listening from Dhruva the other day. Dhruva mentioned this, that of all the Bhakti Shastri or Bhakti Vibhav teachers that they saw, uh, they said Maharaj's classes stand apart. Uh, you can never guess what Maharaj is going to come up with. Um, he, he's, he's such a wonderful, uh, knowledgeable person, beautiful lectures, and that's the talk, but the other side of it is walking the talk. Um, Maharaj is very, very, very well known for being somebody who gives priority to his sadhana and inspires many to do the same. So let's listen from um, His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashana Narsinga about Govardhan Puja. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, thank you so much for making it here and giving us your time. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adwaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So Govardhan Puja, one of the important festivals which we celebrate every year. This Govardhan Puja is especially important because it comes in the middle of our month of Damodar. And we're all celebrating Damodar daily and it's very nice to have this Govardhan Puja coming. Uh, actually, it comes before Prabhupada's disappearance. Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada was in Vrindavan for his departure and he wanted to go around the Govardhan hill before his departure. He was telling Tamal Krishna Goswami and Bhavananda that you take me around Govardhan, get a bullet cart and take me around the Govardhan. So at that time Srila Prabhupada's body was very frail and the devotees said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada that you cannot do that. It will, it will surely end your life. And anyway, the, they persuaded Prabhupada not to go. However, Krishna had his own plan, and a few days later, Srila Prabhupada departed from the world. And then in accordance with Srila Prabhupada's desire, after Prabhupada departed, we brought his murti around the Govardhan hill. And in this way we fulfilled Srila Prabhupada's desire, which was to perform the parikrama 
of the Govardhan Hill. So of course every year, you know, we celebrate Govardhan Puja and here also devotees have constructed a very nice, colourful, attractive hill in commemoration of this wonderful event of Lord Krishna picking up the hill of Govardhan. People sometimes wonder how it is that the Govardhan hill could accommodate all the people of Vrindavan because it doesn't seem very big. There's so many descriptions of the Govardhan in the Srimad Bhagavatam. For example, in Venu Gita, the gopis are singing the glories of Lord Krishna's flute and at one point they praise the Govardhan hill and they say that of all the devotees of Lord Hari, this hill, Govardhan, is the best of all the devotees. So it's very wonderful that the gopis say this because usually we all say the gopis are the best of all the devotees. But the gopis themselves, they say, no, Govardhan Hill is much better devotee than we are. So we may wonder, what service could Govardhan Hill ever do for Lord Krishna? And the gopis go on to describe how the Govardhan Hill is doing so many wonderful services, providing wonderful facilities for Lord Krishna, for his pastimes and also for the care of Lord Krishna and the cowherd boys and the cows also. The cows of Govardhan are very, very special, very beautiful. We, we are taught to take care of cows and I think of all the cows I've ever seen, the most beautiful cows are there at Govardhan. They're very, very special, sublime creatures. So the gopis describe that the hill of Govardhan provides water, provides water for the cows sparkling, refreshing, cooling water. Where is the water coming from in Govardhan Hill? Srimad Bhagavatam says there are waterfalls on the Govardhan Hill. Did you ever see any waterfalls on the Govardhan Hill? Who, how many of you have been around the Govardhan Hill? Put your hand up. Not many, eh? Wow. We have to take you all there one day. It's a nice, wonderful, op wonderful excursion to go around Govardhan Hill. Uh, Sanatana Goswami used to go around the Govardhan Hill every day. Even in his old age, he was going around, and it got so so much. It became so difficult for him, but still he was insisting on doing it. Lord Krishna appeared to him and told him, You don't have to do this anymore. You're an old man. You shouldn't be trying to walk around the Govardhan Hill, which is like 22 kilometers. You know, young people like all of you, you can go around in four hours without much difficulty. Sanatana Goswami was in his 80s and he was going around the Govardhan Hill. Of course, some of the devotees, maybe Gov like Govinda Maharaj, of course you all know Govinda Maharaj, he's very, very popular here and, and he's done wonderful service here. Govinda Maharaj has gone around Govardhan Hill doing dandabats. Dandabat Parikrama around the Govardhan Hill. Not all in one day, of course, <laughs> takes, a, takes a month, but that's also a very wonderful, very purifying experience. I haven't done it myself. I would like to do it if I can arrange the time. But Govard Govinda Maharaj set a wonderful example for all of the devotees. He did it with some other devotees. 
And in the past, many great Acharyas, they also went around the Govardhan Hill. And some of them even bring uh, shilas from the Govardhan. They will have like 108 stones. And they won't just offer one-time obeisances at a spot, but they will offer 108 obeisances at each spot. Each spot they will move one stone, one stone, one stone, and this way every, at each place offering 108 obeisances. So in this way it takes a considerable time to go around the Govardhan Hill. But it's a wonderful meditation to do that. Uh, going around the Govardhan Hill you have the opportunity to see wonderful places such as uh, Uddhava Kund, place where Uddhava met with uh, Uddhava met with Vidura and gave spiritual knowledge to Vidura. There's also Radha Kund which is very very sacred that's at the very tip of the Govardhan Hill we don't walk on the Govardhan Hill itself. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set the example for us not to walk on the Govardhan Hill. Why? Because Govardhan itself is Lord Krishna. Just as Ramanujacharya, when he would go to Tirupati, in going to Tirupati to see Lord Balaji, you have to ascend the mountain, go up the mountain, which is a form of Anantashesha. So it is said when Ramanuja Acharya would go there to see Lord Balaji, he would go on his knees. He would be walk, crawl, crawling on his knees. He would not walk because he did not want to put his feet on the body of the Lord. So similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never walked on the Govardhan Hill. But there's a special deity there on Govardhan Hill and it was arranged that that deity came from Govardhan Hill just to give darshan to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And similarly, a similar thing happened again when uh, Rupa and Sanatan were desiring darshan, that the Lord himself in his deity form descended from the Govardhan hill so that he could give darshan to all the devotees who were anxious to see this deity of Lord Krishna who usually resides on Govardhan hill. So Govardhan hill is very special for us. As we say, it is Lord Krishna himself. One devotee described, he said, this is one temple where you can have darshan of Lord Krishna 24 hours a day. He said, the curtains never close on Govardhan. And so you can go there any time, day and night, and you can have darshan of Lord Krishna in his form as Giri Raj Govardhan. However, we have to be aware that Giri Raj Govardhan is becoming smaller. As I was describing, there are no waterfalls on Giri Raj anymore. What happened? In the time of Lord Krishna, 5,000 years ago, Govardhan Hill was much taller, much more majestic than he is today. Of course, he is still majestic, but He's not as tall as he was 5,000 years ago. And there's a reason for that. The reason being that Govardhan was cursed. The, the story goes that Govardhan was originally residing over in the range of the Himalayas. And a great yogi named Pulastya, he desired to have a mountain on which he could perform his meditation. So he happened to see Govardhan 
and he thought, this is a very beautiful mountain. I should take that mountain to Benares, and I will have the mountain there at Benares, and when I meditate, I can sit there on top of this mountain. So Palastya had a conversation with Giri Raj Govardhan and convinced Giri Raj to come with him to Benares. However, Giri Raj had some condition and he told Palastya that I will go with you. I will agree f to allow you to pick me up and take me with you. But if you ever stop anywhere, I will remain there. I will only go with you as far up until you stop. If you stop any place, I'm going to stay there. So Palastya thought, no problem. I'm just going to go to Benares. I'm not stopped there at Benares. I reside there in Benares. I want you to be there and I can sit on your peak and meditate. So Palastya picked up the Govardhan and then flew off carrying Govardhan with him. However, when Palastya was tra traveling across the airspace, at a certain point he came over Braja. And seeing the land of Braja, Giri Raj Govardhan was attracted and he was thinking how in the future Lord Krishna is going to appear there. And he thought how wonderful it will be if I can also be there in Braja and Lord Krishna can walk on my slopes. So it happened that Govardhan, by his powerful influence, he arranged that Pulastya felt an urge of nature and he was obliged to answer the call of nature. In other words, you know, he wanted to use a washroom or something, you know what we would say, right? And the call of nature. And so he stopped and he put down Govardhan and went off and answered his call of nature. And then after performing his call of nature, he came back and found that he was no longer able to pick up Govardhan. So what was wrong? And he could not understand. But then Govardhan told him, he said, I told you that if you ever stop anywhere, I'm going to stay there. He said, now you've stopped here, I'm going to stay here. This was in Braja. So Palastya was not happy, he was angry with Govardhan and he cursed Govardhan. He said, you're going to stay here, then I curse you that you're going to become smaller, the size of one mustard seed every day. And it is happening that Giri Raj Govardhan is shrinking, becoming smaller, one mustard seed every day. So although in the past Govardhan was very majestically tall with waterfalls, today it's, there's no waterfalls. However, there are grasses which are very important for the cows there in Govardhan. And on the slopes of Giri Raj Govardhan you also get different roots growing, which are very edible and appreciated by the people of Vrindavan, as well as the cows. There are also sometimes trees producing flowers and fruits. There's a very special feature of the stones on Govardhan, and it is said there that in the winter time, when it's very chilly and cold there in Govardhan, the stones of Govardhan are warm and soothing on the feet. You know here in the you know well you know those of you who go maybe to India maybe Delhi or Vrindavan in the winter time the marble floor can be very cold and painful on the feet, but Giri Raj. The stones of Govardhan, they're warm in the winter. And in the summer, when everything's very hot, the stones of Govardhan are cooling on the feet. So this is the 
wonderful, magnanimous nature of Govardhan, that the stones show these very unique qualities. They're very kind on the feet of the devotees who come and walk around the Govardhan hill. Why do we walk around the Govardhan hill? Because that Govardhan hill is Krishna himself and it's ornamented with the footprints of Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, that they herded the cows over the slopes of Govardhan 5,000 years ago. Not only did they herd the cows on the slopes, but when Indra became angry and sent his Samvartaka clouds to inundate the people of Vrindavan, at that time, Lord Krishna protected all the people of Braja by picking up the Govardhan hill. So this, of course, is a very wonderful pastime exhibited by Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is not simply an avatar, but he is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Ramachandra comes in this world to show us the behavior of a perfect king, a perfect ruler. He's very obedient to his father. He's a very caring husband to his wife. In different ways, he is Maryada avatar. However, Lord Krishna is showing us Lila Purushottam the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna is showing all of the wonderful features of Swayam Bhagavan, the original Personality of Godhead, and how much he cares for the people of Vrindavan as well as all the cows and all the living entities there in Braja. And that is why Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill. Lord Krishna also cares about the ignorance and the pride of the demigod Indra. And Lord Krishna rectified that pride because Lord Krishna had the people of Vrindavan give up the Indra Yagya and simply worship Govardhan hill simply do Govardhan Puja, as we are doing here today. How to perform that Govardhan Puja? Lord Krishna explained, you should prepare all different kinds of nice foodstuffs. And you can read how in Srimad Bhagavatam or in Krishna book, the different ki kinds of foodstuffs which should be prepared are described. Milk products especially should be used to prepare nice milk sweets like rasgulla and rasmalai and sandesh and burfi. Different sweetmeats should be there. Sweet rice and shrikan, all of these different things which are made from milk. Lord Krishna especially enjoys these tasty things, and he wanted us to prepare all of these things to offer to Giriraj Govardhan. So Lord Krishna convinced the people of Braja to give up the Indra Yagya. Giving up the Indra Yagya made Indra very angry. And that was Lord Krishna's purpose. He didn't want in Vrindavan the people of Vrindavan should be worshipping any demigods. He wants that the people of Braja will just show pure bhakti, pure devotion. And this is why Lord Krishna had the people of Vrindavan give up Indra Yagya. No need to worship other gods. If you worship Lord Krishna, then all of the gods are satisfied. All 33 crore 
devas are all taken care of simply by the worship of Lord Sri Krishna. And therefore, in the form of Giri Raj Govardhan, we're satisfying Lord Sri Krishna. And because Lord Sri Krishna is happy, all 33 crore of the demigods, including Indra, are also satisfied. So the people of Vrindavan prepared a wonderful festival to offer to Giriraj Govardhan. Krishna told the people of Braja, worship this hill and worship the cows and the brahmanas. Don't need to worship Indra. Lord Krishna was aware that Indra had become proud. However, Indra was, he accused the people of Vrindavan as being proud and being foolish. He said, they're so foolish, they're listening to this stupid little boy, Krishna. And Srimad Bhagavatam describes how Indra accused Lord Krishna as being talkative and being childish and being ignorant. However, the Acharyas, like Sridhar Swami, he says that while Indra's intention may, may have been to insult Lord Krishna, Mother Saraswati actually arranged that the terms which were used by Indra were actually a glorification of Krishna. Just like one of the words which Indra used is that this boy Krishna is vachanam, He's very talkative. He talks too much. But the Acharyas explain that this word also means that what he is talking is authorized by the Vedas. That everything he's saying is approved by the Vedic authorities. And then Indra accused Lord Krishna as being ajnana, ignorant. But the Acharyas say not that he is ignorant, but he knows everything. And for one who knows everything, there's nothing more to be known. Lord Krishna is omniscient. He knows everything. He doesn't need to go and study at college like all of us, right? You have to go and study and we have to learn things. Krishna knows everything. He's omniscient. So there's nothing for him to learn. And when he's described as being childish, Yes, his innocence is like a child, but he's always the original personality of Godhead. And he is praised by all great acharyas and great thinkers. In the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna declares, not only do I accept you as truth, but also Asita, Devala, Vyasa, Narada, they all declare this of you. Now I'm also accepting. And so the great thinkers, great philosophers like Narada, Vyasa, they all recognize Krishna as supreme. And Lord Krishna himself says, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just as pearls are strung on a thread. So this is Lord Krishna speaking about his own divine position. So in this way, Lord Krishna convinced all the people to do this Govardhan Yagya. Sometimes we call this festival as Anakut, the giving of grains. And we're preparing many wonderful foodstuffs, many varieties, different varieties. Just this morning at Regent School, they had a wonderful presentation of Govardhan Leela and so many varieties, different varieties of prasadam was prepared and offered. And here also this evening, the devotees have also done very nicely, preparing many varieties just for the pleasure of Lord Sri Krishna in the form of Govardhan. And Lord Krishna, in order to convince the people that this hill of Govardhan is actually worshipable, Lord Krishna assumed the form of Govardhan and he personally came and accepted all of the preparations which they had prepared and he began to eat them all. And as he was eating, 
they would have to bring more. And maybe you know, when you go around Govardhan Hill, there's one village there which is called Anior. Anior meaning bring more. <laughs> and so they would bring oceans, big rivers of chutney and oceans of rasgulla and chut and samosas and kachoris and oh puris and halava and oh everything not just kitchari <laughs> right but every all varieties savories and salties and sweet and fried and baked and oh every variety of food stuff was all there and Govardhan was appearing and he was accepting everything. And as he was eating, the people were becoming worried that how will we ever satisfy them? He's eaten so much. We're running out. We don't have much more to offer to him. What are we going to do? So then they remembered, oh, quick, put some tosi leaves on. And as soon as they put the tosi leaves on top, of the preparations and the Lord accepted them immediately mm, the, there was a belching sound and the Lord said all right now I'm satisfied now I have had enough and so this village Aniora is there when you go around Govardhan you can see there are some gullies along the side of Govardhan Hill and it said that 5,000 years ago this is where these uh, different preparations of the different foodstuffs they were all filling these gullies and Govardhan came in a wonderful form to accept all of the offerings so this is very wonderful pastime uh, very important of course Indra got angry tried to inundate Vrindavan and the result was Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill but this was also a plan of Lord Krishna because the gopis of Vrindavan were always aspiring to have time to look at Lord Krishna and to be with Krishna. They were always afraid that the society of Vrindavan was so conservative. Young girls who were not married, they were not allowed to even look on another young man. But the gopis wanted to see Krishna and they were always thinking, when will we ever get the chance to see Lord Krishna? So it happened when Indra became angry and sent his clouds to inundate Braja. Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill and at that time he called all the people come under the hill and take shelter. So all the gopis also came along with all the cows and they were all under the Govardhan hill and the gopis could have a festival enjoying looking at Krishna for seven days and nights continuously without any rebuke from any of the elders. So this was in fulfillment of the desire of the gopis. And Lord Krishna is also pleased. He's also enjoying to be with his very dear devotees. Of course Indra's pride was defeated and Lord Krishna placed the hill back in position. The people were all jubilant and they were wondering, who is this boy Krishna? How wonderful he is, that how he could pick up Govardhan Hill and hold it up without even getting tired for seven days. You know, you watch people do weight lifting you see them lift something, hold it for two seconds, and then crash, you know. They can hardly maintain it. I saw there was one film, The Strongest Man in the World, and he was picking up this very huge, big weight. You could hardly hold it for more than a moment or two before the whole thing crashed to the ground. And Lord Krishna, he doesn't have big muscles and big biceps. Sometimes artists, in the beginning of our Krishna conscious movement, the artists were painting pictures of Krishna. And one of the artists, he, they put these big muscular biceps on Lord Krishna. But Prabhupada said, no, 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 this is not Krishna. 
Lord Krishna doesn't need big muscles to pick up the Govardhan hill. He can do everything with his spiritual body. We have to understand the pastimes of Lord Krishna are not of this world. And we say, if you can understand how the birth and the activities of Lord Krishna are all divine, then upon giving up this body, we never have to take birth again. So very important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. So understanding this Govardhan Leela is a wonderful opportunity for all of us to become enriched in our consciousness of Krishna. We should be thinking how wonderful Krishna is. There's a chapter like that. After Krishna picks up the Govardhan Hill, the next chapter in the Srimad Bhagavatam or in the Krishna book is Wonderful Krishna. It's a wonderful chapter. Please go through it again and again and relish all of the pastimes of Krishna. How the people of Vrindavan relished all the Leela of Lord Krishna more and more. However, there's one person who was a little uh, embarrassed by the whole thing, of course, and that was Indra. And he came before Lord Krishna, but he didn't come alone. First of all, he went to Lord Brahma and explained the situation, how he'd been very foolish and tried to insult, he'd been insulting to Lord Krishna. So Lord Brahma told him, he said, well, you want to apologize, but don't go on your own. Take Mother Surabi, the, the mother of all the cows of this planet. Take Surabi from the heavenly planets with you and go to Lord Krishna and offer prayers in this way. In this way Krishna may accept you, he may hear you. But if you go on your own, he may just ignore you. And so Indra did that. He got Surabi to come with him and they went to meet Lord Krishna and they met him at a place called Govinda Kund. There's a, a, a beautiful Kund there on the side of Govardhan where Indra came along with Surabi to meet Lord Krishna. And Indra offered his prayers to Lord Krishna, telling Lord Krishna that you are the father and you are the guru and you are the master of all living entities. And Indra also explained his foolishness. He said, because of my own pride in my position, I was so foolish, I neglected your position. So th this uh, often happens in material life, that we become attached to some material opulence or material position and we become ignorant about our actual position in relation to Lord Krishna. So Indra apologized deeply to Lord Krishna and begged forgiveness. And uh, then Mother Surabi also came and she said to Lord Krishna, actually she said, you are the real Indra. Because Indra means king. And so Rabbi said, this, this Indra from heaven, he didn't, he didn't do anything to help us. He tried to kill all the cows. What kind of Indra is he? He's not a good Indra. And Surabi so told Lord Krishna, you are the real Indra. You are the real king of everyone. And it was at this time, Lord Krishna was given the title Govinda, one who gives pleasure and shelter to the cows. And at that time, Indra, along with Mother Surabi, they performed an Abhishek of Lord Krishna. Indra, with the help of his elephant, Airavata, he brought water from the celestial Ganga, which flows in the heavenly planets, and he bathed Lord Krishna with the water of the Ganges from heaven. And then Mother Surabi, she bathed Krishna with her own milk, coming from her udder, she poured it over Lord Krishna. So in this way the Govinda Kund was formed, which was a mixture of the Ganga water along with the milk from the Surabi cow. And so in a wonderful way, Lord Krishna 
was worshipped by both, both Surabi and Indra. So this is a very brief summary of the pastime of Govardhan Leela. So today we are gathered together to commemorate this very auspicious event which took place 5,000 years ago and we are reenacting it by creating a Govardhan hill and we are going to offer worship to that hill and we want to also circumambulate that hill a bit quicker than in Vrindavan but nevertheless not different from the hill in Vrindavan. And we go around the Govardhan hill and then we will also distribute the Govardhan hill. So you're all encouraged to enjoy and take some of the remnants of this wonderful Govardhan hill. If you want to preserve it and worship it, you can do, but generally we honour the prasadam of Govardhan hill. We take rocks from the Govardhan hill and worship them, but the Govardhan hill which we have created is edible and you are encouraged also to take food. Just as we take prasadam, prasadam is not different from Lord Krishna, we honour prasadam. And similarly this Govardhan hill is not different from Lord Krishna and we encourage all of you that after we have finished the worship, you can also honour these remnants, these pieces of the Govardhan hill. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Marat, thank you so much for that wonderful class. And uh, I much appreciate what Dhruva was mentioning. There's so many things about Govardhan that I've, I've been around listening to a lot of Govardhan Kata. Uh, but there were so many interesting things in that we could learn from Maharaj and the importance of Govardhan resonates from what he says. Thank you so much Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So we're going to have a drama now. So, drama wale. <laughs> Ajao. And after the drama we'll be singing, uh, I think it's already been sent. A link will be sent out. We'll sing a song that will bring Govardhan and Vrindavan as a presence into this place. Jai Radhe, Jai Krishna, Jai Vrindavan. Very beautiful song. We'll sing that and then head on with the Parikrama uh, to close out. Hare Krishna. And then comes the best part. Prasadam. Hare Krishna. got your drama group, huh? Yeah. And, uh, Hare Krishna! as the drama team is getting ready. Can I have a show of hands specifically of Namrata, Alpa, and uh, uh, who's the third? Sneha. 
Anybody else that we are having from the old batch? Can you stand up for me, Sneha, please? Namruta, somewhere around? Alpa? Namruta, can you also come forward, please? Oh, she left for the day. Okay, she had a kid with her. So, Alpa has also come here with her kid. Uh, Namruta was here with her kid. Sneha is here with us. These are all people who have been part of the youth class 20 years ago. So, there are many, many generations and they are all shocked to see the completely new set, all new, new faces. They don't recognize anybody other than a few vestiges. They remember Rahul and uh, Dhruv as little kids who were messing around with everything in those days. Uh, <laughs> that's all they, they have as memories. Thank you for being here, Sneha. Thank you. Alpa, thank you for being here with us. Thank you.